Sherman calls me back to end of time. Lord knows I'm ready to move forward in my mind. And Fred and us went to golf. I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me. You can take my possessions. You can take all my gold. Nobody but Jesus call and save my soul. Walk through darkness. I don't need no light. My faith in Jesus going to be my guide. Ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me. You can take me for granted. You can take all my gold. Nobody but Jesus going to take my soul. River driving, but I got no doubt. My sweet Savior's going to pull me out. Ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me. You can take my possessions. You can take all my gold. Nobody but Jesus is going to take my soul. What's going on in your heart or your life? Amen. It's good to know the Lord. It's good to be a Christian. It's good to be saved. It's good to have my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I hope today that you have that confidence as well. But certainly don't remember or don't forget to be praying. Uh, we haven't drawn a name out of the box in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, the reason being is we're praying for uh, BJ and Jessica, praying for this situation uh, that God will continue to, uh, to touch and to bless. And we don't know the outcome. We don't know what's going to take place. It's, it's not necessarily for us to know, but it's to trust in the one that's able, amen, to do all things. And uh, I heard a preacher uh, I can't remember if it was one day this week or if it was this morning. I really can't remember just trying to get ready for today. Uh, but, you know, you hear things, you know, long and long, and you really forget what time frame it was. You heard it. But he was preaching about a God that can. And I thought, man, that's right on time, you know, because my God can do anything. And I, I'm thankful for that today. I'm thankful that I serve, amen, uh, uh, not only a God but the God, amen. There's many things that can be made of God. Uh, we can worship many things, you know, and the Bible looks at them as, uh, uh, demigods, or you see that word God with a little G, it's things that men have made God. And uh, the God is not pleased with such things, but yet men do it anyway. And uh, But I'm thankful this morning that I know the God. Hallelujah. My God can do all things this morning, and I trust in Him, and I love Him, and I appreciate Him. And uh, have you ever just been happy? You know, you just you just been happy. You know, you're walking around, and you know it just feels like everything just seems to be a little brighter, a little greener. Uh, the air smells a little fresher. You know, everything seems to be good. Even though there may be some chaos, there may be some things going on uh, in your heart, in your life. There may be some trouble. There may be some trial. But yet you just feel the Lord with you. You know that God's got it in control. Amen. And what a, what a feeling of peace and joy and happiness and love that we have whenever we have that relationship and we have that closeness with the Father. And I don't know about you, but my earthly father, he was, a, he was a big man. You know, as I was a kid growing up, he was always a big man. And it seemed like whenever, you know, things were hard or things were going wrong or, uh, you know, there was a storm or there was something going on, you could get in, you know, daddy's arms and he would hold you tight. And there just seemed to be a safety there uh, that nothing could harm, nothing could get to me if I could get in daddy's arms. And what a peace that brought and what a joy Amen. That brought to a young heart. And no different than we are uh, this morning, us in Christ this morning. Uh, uh, in Christ, we can come to the Father. Amen. When we have trouble or trial, when everything's going wrong in our life, or maybe there may be decisions to be made, or there may be troubles that you're facing. There may be something on the horizon. You don't know the outcome of it. You don't know uh, what's going to take place. But I heard a preacher say that worry... Amen, as a practicing of, a, of, of atheism, if you want to know the truth of it. Uh, if you're worried about something, then you're not trusting in God. You're not believing that God can do that, amen, which he said he could do. And I thank God this morning that I serve a God that can do all things. And I appreciate him this morning. We can run to him. And we can get up into his arms, so to speak, spiritually speaking. And God can give us peace and comfort in the midst of whatever you may be dealing with. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to preach a simple message. Uh, I've, I've wrestled this week with, uh, with, with several thoughts and what God would have me to preach on. And uh, lo and behold, this ain't nothing I've read all week long. So uh, this is going to be good for me and you, I hope. Amen. Colossians chapter number 3. 
probably not the first time, amen, that we've preached from this, uh, but there's just something about this this morning, amen, that has just uh, kind of leaped off the page, and it kind of uh, kind of grabbed my attention, and, uh, and I like to let the Lord have His way, amen, let the Lord lead us and guide us, and it seems to work better when I get out of the way and let the Lord have His way, hallelujah. But in Colossians chapter number 3 and verse number 1, if you're there, say amen. The Bible says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead. Listen to that. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. In God. When Christ, who is our life, do you understand what the Apostle Paul here is trying to convey? Our life is dead. We are dead, but we are alive in Christ. Christ is our life. The Bible says that we are no longer our own, but we belong to God, who gave His Son for us and died for us. There seems to be such an opinion in the modern church that it's all about me and what I can get from God. But really, the life that we should be living is a sacrificial life to give my life to God so that He can do what He wants to do and that what He gives me and what He blesses me with is plenty and it's enough. Amen? To be happy with the life that we have in God. Amen. I'm satisfied with my God. Are you? I'm satisfied with the life that He's given to me. I'm thankful for what He means to me. I don't need to find anything else. I don't need anything else in my life. I have what I need, amen, to make it to the finish line. All I've got to do is keep my eyes on Him. He said He would provide my every need. He didn't guarantee my want, but He said, I'll make sure. Son, if you serve me and you follow me, if you set your affection on me, in other words, that's my heart, that's my love. My love is on Him. He is above. He's sitting at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for you and I. He is very much a part of what's going on here in this life. Amen. His eye never leaves us. It's always on us. Uh, regardless of how high or how low we may be at that moment, uh, the God that we serve, amen, is never far away. He's always on time, every time, when we live for Him and love Him and serve Him. Uh, he is a very very present help in a time of trouble. Amen. If you have been risen with Christ, then seek those things which are above. Are we happy this morning with our life in Christ? Amen. If we are this morning, then we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. If we're satisfied with our God, I'm not talking about satisfied in the sense of sitting down and not needing anything else, but I mean satisfied in whom I serve. And knowing that He can and He alone can provide my every need. Hallelujah. If you will, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we thank you this day, Lord, for your many blessings upon us. And Lord, open apart our hearts this morning, Lord. And, and I pray, Father, pour in your word this morning, God. Open our ears and our hearts of understanding. Let us, Lord, hear your word, Father, and feel your spirit this morning. I pray, Father, go into every seat, every aisle, every pew this morning, God, and lift up your people this morning. Touch them, Lord. But let us leave, Father, lifted up and blessed. Let us leave encouraged. Let us leave, Father, with something that we can hold on to. Let us, Lord, know that you're our anchor this morning, God. You are our foundation. And, Lord, there's nothing else in this life, Father, that we need to look to or we need to print upon. But let us, Father, seek you with our whole heart this morning. And let us this morning, Father, with a proud heart this morning, and our, and our God this morning. Not proud in this world, but proud, Lord. Uh, Father, for you are our God this morning, and our heart is bubbling over. And Lord, our spirit this morning, Father, is zinging this morning. Uh, Father, we feel a tingling in our heart this morning, God, for who you are and what you mean to us this morning, God. Lift us up, Father. Keep us this morning. And Father, let us, Father, leave this place today lifted up, Father, and blessed and encouraged. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So looking at this scripture this morning, if you've been risen with Christ, if you're risen with Christ, what is he talking about here? We must set this foundation that there is 
uh, uh, the promises of God, amen, are in the Word, uh, and it's been uh, tabulated or been counted by theologians and by men greater than myself, uh, uh, that there are over 3,600 promises uh, that they've counted in the Word of God. I haven't counted each one of them. Uh, I, I'm just going on what they say, but I know the book is full of promises, and there's some that I hold to very dearly to my heart. And, and probably the greatest promise to, to me, one of the greatest promises, uh, is when Jesus Christ looked at his disciples and he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, and I began to think about that the other day as I was probably uh, kind of between a rock and a hard place. And I began to look at this thing. Uh, and I began to pray and ask God for help and direction. Uh, and he said, I will never leave you. Uh, that means that he'll not turn his back on us, Sister Beth. Uh, he'll not go the other way when things, amen, uh, uh, don't go just right. Uh, he said, I won't be the one to walk away from you. Uh, he said, I'm going to be here through the thick and the thin. Uh, I'm going to be here when the water rises. Uh, he said, I'm going to be your shelter when the storm comes. Uh, he said, and when you walk through the fire, he said, I'm going to be the covering. Uh, amen. That's going to keep the fire off of you. And even the smell of smoke, amen, can't harm you. Uh, he is the God that covers. Uh, he is the God that keeps us. Uh, he is the God that walks with us uh, through the dark times. Uh, in the dark stormy nights uh, and he is the God that walks those dark hills uh, I'm satisfied with who I've got a hold to this morning uh, I've locked arm in arm with him this morning uh, and I know regardless uh, of what happens in this world uh, my God's going to see us through amen. amen he tells us if we need be risen with Christ amen I once was lost but now I'm found I was lost and undone outside of the promises and the covenants of God Amen. Alienated from those things which God had promised. Why? Because I had a rebellious heart. And in my heart, I had made a decision not to serve, amen, the God of heaven and earth. Uh, the God that created it with the mouth, amen, spoke it into existence uh, and framed it, amen, from start to finish uh, with just simply a word. Hallelujah. What does that mean today? Uh, when I came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, uh, I rose from the dead uh, in the natural. Uh, hallelujah. And I became alive in the spirit. Uh, but in the spirit now, I've given myself unto him because uh, he says, if... Uh, Amen. Set your affection on things above, uh, not on the things of this earth. Uh, amen. For you are dead. Uh, I was dead uh, as far as in my sin and trespasses, uh, and Christ made me alive. Uh, and then he said, follow me. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Uh, the only way we can serve God uh, and the only way we can have the promises of God is to be found, amen, in him, uh, doing what he said do. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that this book is full of promises. Uh, and a man can preach every one of them, but it don't affect you or me or anybody else until we pass from death to life. Until we make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of our heart and life, uh, this book means nothing to you. Uh, it affords you nothing. Uh, it'll do nothing to help you. Uh, you can quote it all day long, uh, but until you get on your knees uh, and ask forgiveness of your sin, uh, then and then alone will it help you. Amen. If you need be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want the promises of God working in my life. I know I serve a God that can. But friend, again, I have a fault with the modern message. They preach the promises of God. They preach the benefits of God. They preach everything that God is. But they fail to mention how we are afforded those promises. Amen. They don't want to go that far with it. Amen. Sister Diane, they stop short. Amen. Of telling a person, he or she, whoever you may be, living in adultery, living in fornication, living in lasciviousness, doing the things of this world. Amen. Loving it with everything in your heart. Uh, and then you want to go to some place on Sunday morning uh, and claim everything that God has for you. Uh, amen. While you're living in sin. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, there is no promise for you uh, except you repent and be born again. Uh, hell is your home. Except you repent and be born again. There is no outcome other than hell. People won't, and God is a great God, and God is an awesome Father, and, and, and all the buzzwords that they use nowadays, a heavenly Father, oh, and He's a holy God, and all these things are true, 
Amen. And there's nothing, amen, that can stop. And there's nothing that can degrade him. There's nothing that can wipe that away or wash that away. But it does not afford a man or a woman anything until the Spirit of God deals with that heart. And they pass from death to life. And they come up, amen, being dipped in that precious blood. Hallelujah. There is a fountain, amen, that was opened at Calvary. And the blood began to flow. And the Spirit of God said, whosoever will. Let him or her come and be washed in that blood. And then, then he said, if you be risen with Christ, the problem with the modern church is they've got a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They are preaching and teaching all the benefits of God. And while this book is full of benefits, and it's full of promises. And it's full of good news. And the gospel is the good news. Uh, the thing is, is that a man and a woman inherently is sinful. Uh, the heart is deceitful. Uh, and the body is full of sin. Uh, amen. And man was born that way. Uh, he can't help the situation. Uh, there's nothing he can do about it. David himself said, uh, it was in my mother's womb I was conceived in iniquity. Uh, he come out a sinful man. Uh, but whenever I heard the good news... Uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, not just that he loved me uh, but that he died for me uh, and that I must trust in him and serve him uh, and I must leave the things of this world uh, and put myself in him uh, and be risen with him uh, and that carries with it the weight uh, of leaving this world behind and going with Christ until we go with Christ and allow him to become first in our life that's what being risen with Christ signifies. Oh, it's, it's, it's sunshiny and sunflowers and sweet smells. Everything is good. Everything is fine. You don't have to worry about the doctor. You don't have to worry about this, that, or the other. If you go to the modern church, because you love God, everything's going to work out. What happens, friend, if I meet them time after time? And I run across woman and man after woman after man that says I did everything they told me to do. But still the bottom fell out. Still the trouble came. They told me that everything was going to work out. They told me all I had to do was love God. They told me all I had to do was keep coming and be a part of this fellowship. Uh, let me tell you something. He said in Isaiah chapter 43, he said, when you pass through, amen, the water, hallelujah, you're going to go through some water, amen. Uh, you're not always going to skate on the top of it. But he said, I will not let the water overtake you. Uh, I'll go through it, amen, and Jesus will be every step of the way. The difference, subtle as it may be, but there's a difference in the right preaching and false preaching. Peter said in Second Peter between 1 and 2, he said, Men of old time was moved by God, and they spake as the Holy Ghost gave them the utterance. Amen. But then in verse or chapter one or chapter two, verse one, he said, But there was false prophets at the same time. Sister Beth, when the men of God's trying to preach the truth, uh, there's also the devil's got his advocates, amen. Angels, ministers of light trying to preach the false gospel. Uh, and sometimes they are so close together that man and woman can't discern the difference uh, unless you spend some time on your knees uh, praying and seeking God. Uh, this is not the only time to pray. In the church house. We should have prayed before we came. And we should pray when we leave. And Monday morning when we get up. We should be on our knees again. And we should spend our week in prayer. For Wednesday night service. We should be in prayer. Amen. For our pastor and our leaders. We should be in prayer for our people that come. We should be in prayer for our churches. We have a responsibility. Amen. To lift up the saints of God. And to be a help. Amen. Why? Because we're all going through hell on this earth. The enemy is out to destroy us. Amen. And a child of God. Amen. Can feel that weight. And I see people that have a smile on their face and they tell me that God loves them. I like to talk to them just a little bit, Sister Barbara. Because see, I've got a smile on my face this morning and I've got comfort in my heart and peace and joy. Amen. And I'm preaching about a God that can. 
But let me tell you something right now. I'm stepping in, in some thick things. Amen. I'm fighting the devil on every turn. Amen. I'm a fighting a battle. I'm not just a, a soldier, amen, that's naive to what's going on. And that's why the smile is on my face. That's not it at all, amen. But that's what the modern church has run into. Uh, they've got a naive smile on their face. Uh, they don't understand the battle that's ahead of them. Uh, but I am a soldier this morning, uh, amen, who stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil. Uh, and I've seen it. I've felt the heat of his breath on my neck. Uh, but I know my God uh, has been right there every step of the way. Uh, that's why I can smile. Uh, it's not because there is no trouble. Uh, it's because my God is with me through the trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God this morning. If you're risen with Christ. If you've been risen with Christ, that means you've died. Amen. And if you've died, listen to what he says in chapter 2. He says, you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Paul warned us, amen, against the principalities and the powers of this world. But here we hear that Christ is the complete head of all of it. He's over all of it. Amen, like the brother, uh, Pastor Hagee said this morning. Amen, go in there and eat you some dinner. Sit in your rocking chair. Amen, and say, God, you've got it under control. I ain't worried about it no more. It's in God's hands. I said, preach it on, brother. Preach it on. Amen. We're worried about what's going to happen here, there, and, then, and, and, and what are we doing when we worry? We're simply saying God can't do it. Amen. Don't worry about it. Why? Brother Chris, I'm a human. I should worry. No, you shouldn't if you've been born again. You pass from death to life. This world is not your home. You're just a pilgrim and a stranger following through this world. I'm no longer a citizen of this world. I have to obey the law of this world. But can I tell you something? When the law comes against me for what I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm to follow what God said. And this world no longer has a hold on me. And if, like Stephen, amen, I have to face the gallow or I have to face the, amen, the stone, whatever comes, God is with me. He's here. He's not going to leave. He's going to keep me all the way. That's the promise that he gave us. But that promise only is applicable to our hearts and lives if we be risen with Christ. He said, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In the natural, they cut away the foreflesh of the young male at eight days old signifying a seal or a birthright upon that individual that he was des uh, uh, consecrated to God. Here we find that there's been also a cutting away. Amen. But not by the natural man, but by God himself. Amen. That says that he done it without hand, meaning uh, that he didn't have to, amen, send somebody by to do it, uh, but he did it, amen. It happens at Calvary. It happens when we come to Jesus Christ. Uh, he comes in and performs a surgery on our heart and life. Uh, you can't get up the same way. Uh, you can't leave, amen, with the same heart. Uh, it has to be reborn. It has to be washed again. Uh, you have to be changed, amen. If you're not, you're none of his. Listen to what he said. In whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. The sign was a cutting away of that which was not necessary in God's eyes. Amen. And it set a seal upon that individual that they was a born again or they was the birthright of God's people. We, amen, have been circumcised in the heart. That which is not necessary. It is that unction, amen, of the world. The Bible tells us that we have a sin nature. We were born in sin. We have a propensity to sin. If we don't look for God, amen, and we don't look to Christ, uh, we will engage in things that are not right and in th in sinful things. Uh, but if we're looking at him, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, what that means is I've started this race uh, and I want to finish this race. Uh, I don't want to just have a good start, uh, but I want to finish it strong. Uh, I want to finish it with my head held high. Amen. And the only way I can do that uh, is to keep my eyes on the one that started it and the one that's going to finish it. Amen. And putting off the body of sins of the flesh.
by the circumcision of Christ. In order to be risen again, in order to be in Christ, that, that, that surgery has to be performed in the heart in order for the promises to be applied to our heart and life, in order to have confidence in it, you have to be a child of God. And here he says that that which we've been circumcised without hands, the circumcision is the putting off of the body of sins of the flesh. Pulling away from the world. How many of you know that, well, let's just take somebody in this world that we all know. How many of you know Bill Gates? Bill Gates is probably a billionaire today. I know he's a multi-millionaire, probably a billionaire. Brother Elmo, not one penny of his money is going to me. He don't owe me nothing. I don't have any right to it. As much as he has, Sister Barbara, ain't none of it belongs to me. I've got no right to walk into any bank and say that Bill Gates has got some money in there for me because it ain't true. It don't, it ain't, it, it ain't nothing to me. As much as he's got, you would think he would want to share, amen, with all those poor folk, amen. He's so interested, amen, in, in, in liberalism and giving it out, amen, but yet he's the last one to give anything uh, to the people that need it. God has everything in the storehouse for you. But you can't get none of it. That's hard. That's hard. Well, Brother Chris, God is such a good God. He is. But the only way to unlock, amen, that storehouse is by faith in His Son, Jesus Christ, to be reborn. And to say I have faith is not unlocking the door. It's an exhibition of faith. It's a life lived. It's a heart that's covered by the blood. Amen. It is a day in and day out living for him. Do we fail? Yes, we fail. Do we ask forgiveness? Yes, we ask forgiveness. And the door remains open up, and your name is on the roll, amen, to be able to unlock it. But if your name is not a part, amen, of that system, if God's not given permission to unlock it, why? Because you don't know Jesus Christ. Uh, every promise in that book, amen, is just that. It's out of reach. But whenever you come to Christ, and you be risen with Christ, and you seek those things which are above, Christ sitting on the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for us. He's there. It says to set your affection on things above. Your heart, not on things of this earth. To love the things of this earth is to fail in God's, in, in God's purpose and plan for our life. To love the things of this earth more than God, more than what Christ did for us, is a failure waiting to happen. He says, for you are dead. The difference is, as a man or a woman that has come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. He said, take my spirit among you. What, what is his spirit? He says, for I am meek and lowly. You want to see a man or a woman of God? You'll see somebody who's meek and lowly in spirit and in heart. That don't mean that they're weak. It don't mean that they don't have nothing. But what it means is that Christ is their life. Amen. I'm hid in Christ is what he's telling me. When you see me, you should see Jesus Christ. Uh, before I leave the conversation or before I part ways with you, uh, whether it's at the egg aisle at Harvey's, uh, amen, or the grocery store or the hardware store, uh, at some point in that meeting, uh, you should experience Christ uh, in the heart of a born-again believer. If you don't, then we're none of his. He said we are dead. Well, Brother Chris, I thought I was alive. <laughs> Let's look at the meaning. I'm coming to a close. Romans chapter 6 tells us that we have died. Amen. I want to read it just so you'll know it. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6. Know you not that so many of us as was baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. We have to die of the flesh. 
this is a re is reborning a word. We have to be born again. This is the being born again process. Whenever we come to that altar of prayer and we give our heart and life to Him, at that moment we are giving up of ourselves and we're taking on that which Christ gives. Why? So that we can be that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. This is why we're different whenever we come up because we're not what we was when we went down. We may have the same eye color, the hair may look the same, some may be falling out, you know, I can't help all that. But nevertheless, I'm a new creature in Christ. I've been changed, amen, on the inside. And that has to begin to work, amen, in such a way that it begins to protrude out, amen. That light cannot be hid. It's not, amen, that we light a candle and set it under the bushel, but we set it out in the center of the house. Why? So that it gives light, amen, to everything around us. And when Christ comes in, we begin to shine. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, we died, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Not that you are destroyed, but that sin nature may be destroyed. It is not completely obliterated or gone away, but what happens is that the spirit of man takes over. Amen. How well, do we know that? We will see that here in just a second. For he that is dead is freed from sin. If we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. What and how did he live? If I'm dead to the world, I should be free to live, amen, as Christ would have me to live. I should be living a different life. If I'm not and still doing the things I used to do, uh, then Christ is not living in my heart. Knowing that Christ be raised from the dead, dieth no more, death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died once unto sin once, but that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive, amen, unto God through Jesus Christ. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey the lust thereof. And he tells us here simply, amen, that whenever we were born again, we died in the natural as far as the sin nature Amen. On the natural side of things so that the Spirit of God can be put in our hearts so we can now be afforded the promises of God. We now, being born again, have a right, amen, to come before the throne of God and make our petition known and to have victory over whatever's going on in our life. But in order to be dead in Christ, and our life to be hid in Christ, excuse me, to be dead and our life to be hid in Christ is to willingly hand over. He killed that old man at Calvary. Amen. Every one of us that walked up that hill full of sin and shame. But when we gave our heart and life to him, amen, he killed that old man and born us up, raised us up, a new man, a spirit man. And then we have to willingly hand over the, the driver's seat of that new life and say, now, God, that you've given me this new life, because I was the one that made a wreck of the old life. I'm not going to take charge of this life. I'm going to give it to you because you and you alone, amen, can help me home. So it's not that we're dead. We're very much alive. But it's a sense of control. If we're hid in Christ, that means Christ is in the driver's seat. Christ is leading. Christ is guiding. It's all about Him this morning. I'm satisfied with my life. In God. Are you? Are you happy this morning? Amen. The promises are yours if you've been born again. The promises belong to every single one of them. Amen. Go back and look at some of them. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. I've stood at the foot of my baby's bed and I've declared, Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He can't attack me, but he'll attack my children. He can't get me, but he'll attack this area or that area. But can I tell you something? God said the promises was mine. And I've stood and I've declared, thus saith the Lord, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. My God, amen, will keep and protect all that that is mine. I believe that. I have the right, Sister Avonel, to proclaim that promise and stand on it. Why? Because I'm one of his. Not because... I come to church this morning. 
Not because I may give an offering plate. Not because my name's on the roll or my family done this or my family done that. But I have the right to the promise because I walked the aisle. And I went down and I said, God, I'm a sinner. I'm lost and undone. Uh, and I've made a wreck of my life. Uh, and if you will take this off of me and you will come into my heart and life uh, and you will wash me clean uh, and set me on the right road, uh, God, I'll do everything in my side. Amen. To serve you and to love you and to honor you. He ain't never failed me one time. I failed him on this journey, but he ain't never failed me. But let me tell you something. Amen. What's today's date? July the what? 23rd, 2017. Hey, man, I'm still, hey, man, digging in the way. Hey, man, I'm still plowing. Hey, man, on the gospel highway. I'm still living, hey, amen, to the, do the best that I can do, hey, amen, that God would look at me and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I know the blood's been applied, uh, but my responsibility, hey, amen, is to sow and to press, hey, amen, and to do for the kingdom of God, hey, amen, and to work, hey, amen, and to be accounted worthy. I love you this morning, and I appreciate you. If you don't have that confidence this morning, there's an altar. There's a door here. I had a thought. I thought that might, about, might be what we preached this morning, but it never came to fruition. But I'll say it right here and simply, if you would come. I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray. The Bible says in the seventh chapter of the book of Joshua that the children of Israel had came up against the city of Jericho. God had given instruction how to take the city of Jericho. We all know the story. God also gave a warning not to take anything, the accursed thing. He said, kill everything, destroy everything. Amen, except for the things that he wanted put in the house of God. And those things would be consecrated. Everything else destroyed. How many of you know, he said, except Rahab, the harlot, for all those religious people that are living, listening. Amen. Rahab, the harlot, called out by God himself, save her and all that's in her house, because she did for me. Sister Beth, Rahab was saved and all that was in her house. And when they came out, there was a man by the name of Achan. And the Bible says he took of the Babylonian garment and the, and the shekels of silver and gold. And he took them and he hid them in the heart of his tent. In the center underneath the floor, he dug a hole and covered it up and laid the carpet and everything back on top of it. And he hid it. He didn't even enjoy it. He saw it and, and his heart was attracted to it. Uh, he coveted it and he took it, but he couldn't even enjoy it because it was a sinful thing. The next city, a small city, nothing in comparison to Jericho. A little tiny city by the name of Ai. The men spied it out and they said, let us only take about 3,000 men because this city is so small and their heart is already melted because what God has done for us uh, coming out of Egypt, what we've done at Jericho, this will be a cakewalk, Jim, uh, Joshua. He said, okay, let's go. They went to the city. And the Bible says that the men of that city turned the tide on Israel. And chased them out of the city in, back into the wilderness. And I believe it was 18 or either 26 men was killed on Israel's side. They were demoralized. They were beaten. And they didn't understand why Joshua goes before God and begins to beg and cry and plead. God, could you please tell me what in the world happened in this battle? Why is it that we couldn't win? Where is it that we should go back to Egypt? He said, what are you going to do about it? What's wrong here, God? God said, Israel has committed a sin. When Achan took it, it didn't just curse his family, but that whole sinful curse fell on the whole nation of Israel. What you and I do has an effect on more than just what us is or our home is. It has an effect over our church. It has an effect over our community. It has an effect. Why? Because we should know better, amen, than to do that which is wrong. We are God's people, amen, and we should live according to God's word. And we should not meddle or do things outside of the will of God. But he did. And the nation suffered. The Bible said he talked with Joshua. He said, take Amen. The heads of the tribes. 
and we will go tribe by tribe, family by family, until it's called out. And I preached a message here one time. You better get right because it's coming. He's coming. It finally went through every tribe. It went through every house. The, the, the tribe of Judah was pulled. They went through every tribe there. The house of Zemri was pulled. Uh, and then they came right to the tent door. God led them to the very place to do something about the problem. And they said, Achan, confess before God. He's ready now to confess. Oh, yes, I did this. I shouldn't have done it. But it's too late. The Bible says that him and his whole family were stoned and burned with fire. God is just. It don't seem like it in our natural minds that one should pay for another, or this should be for that, or that, or how this should go. But God, in His ultimate wisdom and knowledge, He knowed every one of them and what was in their heart. God knows what's in our heart. And God says, I've given you these promises, but you've got to live for me to have them. And today, if you're wanting the promises of God to work in your life, but you don't know God, I want you to come to this altar. If you would, play something soft. If you would, let's all stay. The Lord knows our heart this morning. God knows everything about us. There's nothing that's hid from Him. Friend, you don't have to fake being a Christian you can have the real thing he made it he made a way for us to have the real thing I would hate to have walked this journey to get to the last leg of the race and to see that everything I done was a put on that I didn't have the goods I'm not saying this to discourage or to hurt anybody or to try to tear anybody down. But friend, we're going to stand before a thrice holy God at the end of this journey. That ain't no joke. That ain't no put on. And that ain't no game. I'm going to stand before Him. You're going to stand before Him. And the Bible says that we're going to answer for the things that we've done. The good and the bad. The right and the wrong. The Bible says that He's going to look in the books those books are where those things are recorded. And whosoever name was not found written in the book of life, he said, they'll be cast in the lake of fire. That's a reality that's coming. I don't care what the preacher says. I don't care how big the church is. I don't care how pretty the singers are and how pretty they sing. I don't care about all the accoutrements and everything that they've got. If we have to have church outside under a brush arbor, as long as we've got the Spirit of God and we've got the right kind of word being preached, we can make it. It doesn't matter about all the fancy things. It just matters do we have God or not. Yes, yes. But we're going to face God one day. And when we do, it's not going to be what this one said or that one said or how this one believed. But it's going to be asked of you how you, how you have believed. Do you have confidence this morning? I do. I'm happy this morning with the decision I've made to serve the God of heaven.